Let me talk about this again okay. without the distorted audio. So this would be, again, this is TA active mm -hmm. in the Herb Spec model. This would be mode one in Henri Schubo. And uh, this would be adducted. So adducted chest, okay? Yeah. So this is, what I want you to pay attention to is the EGG slope. And notice that we have a very sharp rise. Then this descent, have a little bit of a knee here. And with the derivative in, we can actually confirm with the derivative, um, if I actually take the EGG out, this is just the derivative. Here's our local maximum, here's our local minimum. So we have more confirmation that what we're seeing in the EGG is correct. Um, and a contact quotient of about 62. It's, it's, it's about right. Um, so that would be, TA dominant, uh, no, TA active in the Herb Spec model, adducted chest. Okay, now let me flip back and record something and I'll do, I'll do TA active abducted. Okay, abducted chest. Okay, can you hear me again? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you note in this one, my contact quotient went down a great bit, but I'm at a pitch that I can't really do that in a falsetto. I mean, I'm down on an F and the, the likelihood that that's falsetto is very minimal. Um, and it's giving me a contact quotient of 33, which should be way too low for chest voice, right? Thyroid dominance. Um, but this would be indicative of the idea of, of, of uh, abducted chest. Now there's the question also in this of what the EGG is actually reading. Um, I know there's Herbst and Svek have done some done some work comparing EGG to video comography. Um, it's not always lined up. There's a great article in Journal of Voice called "Comparing Chalk with Cheese" um, that you should read. Uh, but 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 this is the idea. It still demonstrates the idea. Okay. Now I'm going to flip back over and I'm going to record. So so again. So we started here. Then we went from here to there. <laughs> now I'm gonna go here and go breathy first, okay? So this will be abducted falsetto. EGG doesn't like really weak sounds. Mm. Hear me again, yes? yes? Yes. Now, notice how non-steep mm. the rise is in the slope. You see that? Yeah. yeah. That means my vocal folds were coming together a lot less efficiently. Now, there's mm. probably a more efficient way to make that sound than I was just doing, but I was just trying to get us the effect, okay? Mm -hmm. Now there's no way that contact quotient is right, so I'd have to. I was about that. to say. Yeah, no, it's there's there's. It's probably more like, yeah, that that's, I mean, it's actually probably even, there. So I, I would say it's under thirty actually, because this is probably the local maximum, and then the the minimum's definitely here. But I mean, there's a very small percentage of time, uh, that my vocal folds are staying, you know shut because I'm leaking air at the posterior of my gloss. Mm -hmm. So again, right. this would be this shaped posterior open. Open. 
Okay. All right. So that would be abducted false seven. I'm going to switch one more time. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Yes. All right. So this, those are pitches that I was producing in a, you know, I, I definitely think that from an EGG perspective, it would mm -hmm. represent falsetto. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yet I would argue that there's a lot of closure in that sound. I'm not leaking a great deal of air from the back. So I'm in this setup. I'm in this setup, but my posterior is closed. Um, and, you know, we do have a much more uh, aggressive rising slope, but not as aggressive as chest voice, right? Like if we go back to this, look how aggressive our rise is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if I actually, no, let me go back. There we go. There's, there's chest voice. So, I mean, our rising slope is and then we have a slow descent because the vocal folds are taking longer to make that excursion out. Um, and then we have a smaller, a smaller closed phase. What part of that is that? No, I don't want that. What's this right here? Go away. Go away. There we go. Anyway, so now let me do a pitch glide, okay? Now that we've seen these, I'm gonna do a breathy pitch glide and then I'm gonna do a non-breathy pitch glide, okay? So we get to a point where we have a clear shape. Again, we see a, in the breathy one, we see this kind of slope, but where did we start in that? I'm sort of interested to go through it and sort of if we cycled through the EGG, I'd be very interested to see actually like sort of if it was, if it was actually, um, how much this they see right see the change right there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's a definite change in shape where my vocal folds started doing something else okay um so there's some kind of switch in there from mode one to mode two now let's see if we see it in the chestier one so there's chesty mcchestiness Mm -hmm. 66. And see, at some point, oh, darn. Well, it stayed. Well, so that wasn't the best example. <laughs> Hashtag tenor probs. Yeah. Or uh. as one of my dear students, former students, always said, Hashtag freaking tenors. Mm. Um, but but you essentially get the idea, yes? Yes. So yes. would a counter would a counter tenor have that same phenomenon? Or would his would a, would a counter tenor their I guess abduction would be 
were closed. So countertenors are living, trying to live in a, in the Herbst Sveck model in an adducted falsetto, mm -hmm. okay. which when you layer adducted falsetto on from a laryngeal registration standpoint, and you layer on acoustic registration, mm -hmm. they're, they're able to come up or they have to manage a lot of things on ah, just mm -hmm. like any treble singer would sort of in the E4 to E5 octave. They have to manage the same acoustic events that other treble singers, sopranos, mezzos, uh, belters for that matter. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, they're using a different, different acoustic strategy for a different acoustic mm -hmm. registration, but depending on what they're doing. Um, but, but a countertenor would have to negotiate that the same way. It's not that a countertenor, you have to remember a countertenor's physiology, uh, generally speaking, matches that of a baritone or a tenor usually. Um, and, and I mean, a lot of the countertenors that I personally know were baritones. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I, I can't say that every countertenor was a baritone. I would I have no idea. Um, but a lot of the ones that I've known were baritones. And so you have to remember their vocal tract length is a little bit longer probably than their soprano or mezzo counterparts. So mm -hmm. their vocal tract resonances may be up to a minor third or so lower as a resonance set, but they also could be pretty close. Cause again, a human vocal tract is not that many millimeters difference in length. Right. Okay. Um, and in terms of what the vocal folds would do, that's the shape of the air shaping the glottis and what the, you know, what the glottis is doing and how that's impacting the shape of the air. You know, it's all part of the same system. So whether you're a countertenor or whether you're a soprano or whether you're a tenor even, um, you're all having to negotiate a lot of the same things. It just so happens that particularly in the pitch range of C4 to G4, you've got a lot of laryngeal uh, registration stuff that you've got to deal with as any singer. Whether you're a baritone or a bass going into your high range, you're, you're a tenor where you live C to G, or you're a soprano or, or mezzo where you sometimes live C to G, even sometimes soubrettes in ensembles have to live C to G um, uh, because of sitting like a sixth under the lyric soprano, or you're just a lyric soprano who has to deal with negotiating, changing into, into chest voice on, in, in different moments. Um, but, but the, the thing that I sort of want you to take away from this, I think, is that if we compare Ken's acoustic registration model of open timbre, close timbre, whoop timbre, vowel to vowel, and the laryngeal models, both of Henri Schrubeau, mode one, mode two, and Herbst Sveck, adducted chest, abducted chest, adducted falsetto, abducted falsetto. If we put all that together, sort of those three models, we can explain virtually any of the historic models that exist in terms of registration. We can come to an understanding of why a five register system was believed to have existed why a three register system was believed to have existed, why a one register system was believed to have existed, et cetera, et cetera. We can explain in more quantifiable terms words like chest voice, falsetto. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we can have a vocabulary with which to put other language in perspective. Yes, Chandler. Okay, I do have a question, um, and it, this could be this because I'm ignorant, but um, has, when we're talking about historical stuff like that, and we're talking about that, and they say the word falsetto, is that purely talking about the male 
the you know the extreme difference between oh and I, because it's a fine question so i guess is that I'm actually suggesting, i guess what okay. i'm suggesting is i don't think we if we go backwards mm -hmm. meaning we try to understand exactly what garcia meant by this term or we right. try to understand exactly what tozy meant by this term I don't think we'll ever know with 100% assurity. Okay. What we can know as contemporary pedagogues is we can say, based on EGG measurements in video comography and acoustics, what a certain sound that a singer is making okay. is. All right. And then we can say, oh, you consider that falsetto? Okay, great. That's wonderful. But then we can have a conversation on an objective plane, helping us as a community understand why they're using falsetto to mean this thing or that thing or this sound or that sound or why they or why they differentiate between chest voice and or, um, head voice and falsetto. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Okay. That, that, that's yes. a common one, for example. Yes. Um, so I think it's important that we think of ourselves in terms of contemporary pedagogues as translators, because one, if we're going to talk to just singers and voice teachers about this who have their own terminology, rightfully so, listen, and, and I say this in practicum a lot, use whatever terminology